let's move on to uh, election night. Uh, we were on the air talking about how stunning a Murphy defeat was going to be, but we knew even then that there were a lot of votes that had to be counted, something both of you mentioned. Uh, still, how surprising was the result in the governor's race? Senator? Yeah, I, I think, you know, election night was probably more exciting than the actual campaign was. Uh, right. I can say that now that I am uh, happily comfortable that Phil Murphy uh, has been reelected the governor of the state of New Jersey. I, I think that we underestimated the enthusiasm factor on the Republican side of the aisle. Uh, I think we underestimated the um, really the the feelings among the electorate generally. Uh, that I think that they, the whole almost two years of COVID, of economic problems, of uh, Chitterelli being able to tap into uh, New Jersey being a high tax state, all of those things came together to uh, put together, I think, a very large cadre of dissatisfied people. And they came out and voted Republican. And uh, Jack Chitterelli was a, uh, he's a personable guy who comes across well when he's out there meeting the public. And he was able to tap into that without, uh, without I guess, looking like Donald J. Trump. Hmm. Bill, what would you add to that? I had two things to that. I mean, first of all, Loretta's right. Um, like Chris Christie, uh, Jack Chitterelli is a great personality, char charismatic, and uh, connected with people, as Chris did in 09, Jack did uh, this year. First of all, I'm not conceding that it's over. There are a lot of votes to count, so let's count the votes. But I think what happened, right. there were um, uh, two other factors uh, that I would add to Loretta's list. First was the, uh, the chaos in Washington. Uh, the Democratic uh, Party nationally um, is in disarray fighting between moderates and progressives um, as to whether or not uh, you know, we should uh, fix our bridges and, and tunnels with uh, this infrastructure bill, and then how much money to spend, whether it's $2 trillion or $3 trillion or $6 trillion, as Bernie Sanders wants. I think I said this a little bit last on, on election night. Um, Terry McAuliffe Gaff in his debate when he said parents should not be involved in, in setting their school's curriculum um, was heard around the country and was heard in New Jersey. And it gave real life and a real example of the far left agenda that suburban voters are just, you know, afraid of. Um, that they're afraid of, of losing control of their schools. They're afraid of crime uh, skyrocketing um, as on top of the typical issues of, uh, of, um, uh, uh, of, of high taxes. And so I think those two uh, issues um, kind of helped uh, propel Jack to this you know, dead heat that we currently have. And so um, I think that's a, not to be left out of the equation of what was happening in Washington and the chaos in, in, in Terry McAuliffe's problems in, in Virginia that leaked into here as well. All right. So, Senator, you win by 1%, you win by 20%. You still won, uh, assuming that Phil Murphy holds on to this lead. Uh, he should not walk away from any victory thinking that everything is swell, should he? I think that some of this, we're going to have to consider some things in lame duck. What do we address in the lame duck legislature? legislature what don't we address? And I think that um, there is a message uh, using the often used term, people want to talk about their kitchen table issues, about their kids' education, about their access to health care. What I find disconcerting, and, and my friend Bill used the term, the something like the far left, that somehow women's access to reproductive health care is considered far left, or that uh, hopefully teaching accurate history to all of our students that is inclusive and represents the diversity of American history is somehow far left. So I take a little um, uh, discomfort with using terms like that, but I think the voters have spoken and I think Phil Murphy has good hearing 
and that he and the folks around him will know that it is time, along with the Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver, to uh, address the issues that are important to what is the most diverse, densely populated state in the United States. I think a lot of times when governors get get reelected, they get liberated, and I feel that they feel that they have uh, you know more power. Um, they have uh, uh, they're not going to face the voters again. And you know, and the New Jersey governor, uh, by constitution, we know is probably the most powerful governorship in in the country. And so, <clears throat> um, I think uh, we'll, we'll see where the governor wants to take it. Um, but I could see a scenario where the governor. Um, says, you know, I want to press press further. I want to go further. And so we'll see, um, see, see where he wants to go. Or, 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 you know, his party will tell, listen, we got trounced in the suburbs, and so we need to rethink our agenda. What about Jack Cittarelli? What's his future? Can he just write his own ticket right now? <laughs> Well, listen, like I said, we're, we're going to wait and see. He still, you know, he still has a chance to be our governor. And right. uh, there's a large team of lawyers um, here in New Jersey from around the country, frankly, uh, assisting Jack and his campaign uh, to, to look at the, uh, the, the count uh, county by county and make sure it's done correctly and see where we go. But, yeah, I think Jack now is, uh, um, you know, like uh, an, another guy, you know, the, the Governor Kane, Tom Kane, ran and lost a first time and then uh came back four years later and and, and got got uh, elected christy whitman you know uh took uh, bill bradley the overtime um and then in the senate race but then came back and got elected governor so yeah i think jack's future is is very very bright 